Hey everyone, in this video we're going to keep translating the Perseus story. And in this video we're going to cover part 5, which is called the Gorgon's Head. So just to backtrack, at this point we've been following the story of Perseus, right? And we've seen uh, you know, his, his childhood, his upbringing. The last thing we saw is that the king who wants to marry his mother has told him, you know, it's time to leave the nest. You need to go off and, and earn some glory. He's been on his way. Um, you know, he got his, his special gear, his armor, um, his weapons, and now he's ready to to actually go face Medusa, which is the point of his uh, of his journey, right, of this myth. So that's what we're picking up here, okay? And we keep going with the story um, of him finding Medusa, and you're going to see how, how it works and how he actually does uh, kill the Gorgon Medusa. So it starts with this. You have race difficilima erat caput gorgonis obscidere, okay? Here we have, it was the most difficult thing. So erat means it was a race difficilima, the most difficult thing. Again, race is one of these words in Latin um, with no really great uh, translation in English. There's a bunch of ways you can do it. Thing is kind of the catch-all. You could say task or endeavor here. It's going to get at the, the, the same idea, right? It was really hard um, for him to do this, right? And it's saying it was the most difficult obscure to cut off the caput gorgonis, right? The head of the gorgon. OK, remember, this is because, um, you know, uh, Medusa is, is also the Gorgons are special. They have these bronze hands and the, the head filled with snakes. Right. So it's difficult to do. Right. Difficilima was the most difficult to do. Then you have ASNM conspectu homines in Saxum where te bantor. So here you're saying homines, right, people um, who uh, conspectu eus, right, by her gaze is really what this means. <clears throat> And A.S. is referring to Medusa, right, of her, it's genitive. And the conspectu is sort of her, her look, her gaze when she looks at you. So it's saying by the look of her, by the gaze of her, where te banto, we have a passive voice verb. Um, they were turned, right? We have where te, literally this verb to turn. They were turned in soxum into stone, right? So that's why it's difficult <clears throat> to cut off Medusa's head. Because when she looks at you, and a lot of you probably are familiar with this story, when she looks at you, um, you turn to stone, right? So it's not that easy to do. So now we enter one of the, the special tools that Perseus is carrying, right? He has a mirror, and that's the key thing that's going to help him here. So we have propter hanc causa, minerva speculum persio dedera. So propter means on account of or because of. So you're saying because of um, this reason, right? Hanc causa, this cause, this reason, or on account of this reason, um, you could say. Minerva, right, which is um, the goddess Athena. We're looking at the, the Latin version here, so we call her Minerva, but you might know her as Athena from the Greek myth. She, dedera, had given. So this is pluperfect tense. You have um, deity, which is the third principal part of dodare, and you have erot attached to it. So it's pluperfect. She had given, right, the speculum, which is a mirror, to Perseus. Perseo is, is date of case, right? So she had given a mirror to Perseus. This is why, right? For this reason, because she doesn't want Perseus to actually look at Medusa or else he'll turn to stone. Then we have ille igator tergum muerte et in speculum inspiciebat. So ille is he. Um, it means literally like that one, but you can translate it he. It's a demonstrative meaning Perseus, right? So igator, therefore, right? He wert it tergum. He turned his back, right? Tergum is his back. So he basically turned around. He's walking backwards, okay? And in the mirror, in speculum, in spikiebat, so he was looking in the mirror, right? So he's not actually looking at Medusa. He's looking into the mirror, which is letting him see, you know, what's behind him, right? That's how he's going to, uh, you know, approach Medusa. Then you have hoc modo ad locum venit ubi Medusa dormiebat. So hoc modo, in this way, meaning holding the mirror and walking backwards, um, venit, he came to the place, the locum, right? The place ubi where Medusa dormiebat, where Medusa was sleeping, Okay, so Medusa's asleep, and he sneaks up on her by walking backwards and looking in the mirror. So he's not actually looking at her. Okay? Then we have tum falque sua, <clears throat> caput eis uno ictu obscide. Okay, so then... Uh, falque sua is ablative. So with his, um, with his like sickle, right, um, is kind of the idea of the sword that he's carrying. You can see in this um, depiction, the statue down below, he's carrying a sword. It's often thought of as like more of a sickle, right? A falx is, is more that. But he has this, this weapon, right? You can kind of think of it that way. Um, uh, with his sickle, and remember, this is one of his special weapons he got from the gods, right? Um, Obskidit, he cut off the caput, the head, 
Eus, of her, meaning of Medusa. So he cut off her head. Uno Ictu here is saying how he did it. It's ablative. He did it with one strike or with one stroke, I guess you could say. So he approaches with the mirror. And uh, at some point, he's got to turn around and not look at her, right? Unless he's doing it looking in the mirror, how everyone interpret the story. But he cuts off her head with one kind of uh, savage strike. Um, he cuts off the head of Medusa, which is what he was trying to do this whole time. Then you have Keterai Gorgone, Statum e Somno Excitatai Sunt. Et ubi rem viderant, irai komotai sunt. Uh, ira komotai sunt, rather. So you have Keterai Gorgones, the other Gorgons, right? The sisters of Medusa. They immediately, Excitatai Sunt, they were wakened, is how you could say it, right? It's perfect tense, passive voice, which is why Excitatai is the participial form, right? The fourth principal part. And it's going with Gorgones, right? That's why they're... Uh, they're matching each other, right? Case number gender. So they were woken up, a somno, from sleep. Okay. So when they hear this, right, or when they, they hear him killing uh, Medusa, they get woken up, right? Excitate son. And when we dare, when they saw Rem, the, the situation, you could say, again, this is the, the word that, again, doesn't really have a great one way, uh, one great way to translate in English. Um, you might say the situation when they saw what was happening is kind of one way to do it. When they saw the rem, the, the event, meaning uh, Percy's killing their sister, komotai sunt, they were moved, right? Again, when you use komotai um, in this case, it, it doesn't mean physically moved. It means more emotionally moved, right? Overcome is kind of one way to do it. They're moved with anger, right? Era, ablative, by anger, with anger, however you want to parse it. So they're they're incredibly angry, right? They just see this random uh, guy killing their sister, right? So they wake up and they're they're really angry, right? Which is understandable. Then we have Arma Rapueron at Persium Okidre Woleban. So Rapueron, they grabbed, right? Rapio Rap, right? To, to grab or to seize. They grabbed weapons, right? And Woleban, they wanted or uh, were wanting, I guess you could say. It's imperfect. Wanted probably works a little better in English. They wanted Okidre. It's a complementary infinitive. What did they want to do? They wanted to kill Okidre Perseus. Right. So they pop up and they're like, well, let's kill this guy who just killed our sister. Again, a very uh, you know understandable reaction to this random stranger who came in and, and cut their sister's head off. OK, then we have Ile, autum dum fugit, galeam magicam induit. OK, so he again, meaning Perseus. So he, however, you could say while fleeing dum fugit. So while he's running away, right, he flees. He into it. He put on or puts on his galeam magicam, his magic helmet. Right. So he's carrying that special helmet again that he got from um, Minerva and Apollo. So he's got the special helmet. He puts it on. Right. At Ubi Hok fake it when he did uh, when he did this rather. Um, Hok just means this. Right. So when he did this, meaning putting on the helmet, statum a conspectu a arum a wasset. So immediately a wasset he evaded. Right. Or he avoided or, or you could think of it. Maybe evaded is probably the best way to do it. He um, evaded or ran away, disappeared kind of from the conspectu a arum from the gaze of them. Arum genitive. So in other words, when he puts on the magic um, helmet, he, he kind of goes invisible, right? They can't see him. He escapes, right? Remember, he's also got winged shoes. So he's he's doing fine, right? Perseus is able to run away. So they, they come at him with weapons, right? The other Gorgons. He puts on his magic helmet. Again, remember, he needed that the weapon, uh, sort of his hero armor to be able to do this. He puts it on. He vanishes. He runs away from their... Uh, uh, or escapes from that. Maybe that's a better way to do it. Was it? He escaped um, from their gates and now he's off and he's, he's accomplished his mission, uh, his mission. Okay. So when you read this, uh, hopefully it's not too bad, pretty straightforward. I would encourage you to do a little more research into Medusa. Um, Medusa is a really interesting character that in recent years has gotten a lot more scholarship on how we should interpret this story and how we should understand the idea of why she's depicted as a monster and why um, a lot of people accept this idea that Perseus could just walk in and murder her, right? Um, there's a lot more going on to it. Not enough. Uh, we don't have enough time in this video to cover it all, but I'd highly encourage you to look it up on your own. You'll find some really interesting stuff as sort of modern scholarship has um, kind of reinterpreted or, or taken a new stance on what Medusa represents and how we should understand the story. But either way, hopefully the Latin was pretty straightforward, nothing too crazy here. And again, we're, we're working our way through the story. You're just practicing your Latin, and hopefully it's making sense as you go. In the next video, we'll cover the next uh, couple pieces, because now Perseus needs to escape and go back to the island with Medusa's head, and you're going to see what happens. So good luck, keep reading, and like I always tell you, the more you do, the, the easier it'll be.